from the 18th century onwards, London had become a real haven for music lovers, with all sorts of public concerts and operas in many venues like this one, all the way around the West End. But this sort of entertainment was really only for the upper classes of society. In the 1830s, a new type of musical culture began to emerge from London's saloon bars. It was a mixture of sing-alongs, comic songs and snippets of opera and folk music. Very soon, purpose-built venues known as music halls began to open, offering entertainment aimed directly at the working classes. You might find it hard to believe, but behind these peeling doors lies what was once called the handsomest room in town, which was in fact a pub with a music room at the back. But in the 1850s, a chap called John Wilton bought the adjoining properties and turned it into a huge venue, Wilton's Music Hall. And it is in fact the oldest surviving music hall in London. The interior is wonderful, but there are major structural problems, starting with the damp. In fact, it's the only place in England on the world list of endangered buildings. Wilton started as a music hall in 1859 and flourished for decades until there was a terrible fire, and after that it was used as a mission and a rag store. But now they're using it again and hoping to restore it. In the early days, they used to perform extracts from classical operas. In fact, the performers at the Royal Opera House, the moment the performance was ended, would leap into taxis and come down here, still in their costumes and makeup, and perform the same things on the stage here, which the elite thought was wonderful because it would educate the lower classes in the performing arts. I wonder what's on tonight? <laughs> For real performances, they would have used much bigger hydraulic-powered barrel organs, which were, I guess, the Victorian equivalent of the mobile disco. Let me show you how it works. When I turn the handle, this barrel rotates. That's why it's called a barrel organ. And in the barrel, you'll see there are a whole lot of pins and staples. And as the barrel goes round, these pins and staples lift the little keys here, one by one. You can see them going up and then dropping again. This is in fact an early form of programming because there are eight different tunes on this barrel and all you have to do is move it along a bit and you get a different tune, it's very cunning. Now, when you turn the barrel and the keys go up and down, what they do is to move these levers here and you'll see that they're going up and down as they're pushed by the keys. And what they do in turn is round here to move these bits of wood in and out and they allow air to come out past the reeds from the bellows and make a noise. So if I give it a bit more welly to get the bellows going, ain't that blooming marvellous?